we are we're running around the woods but we came back to a spot if you guys are familiar with our videos and our last big trip to LBL you should be familiar with this spot we have come back to the area where we found that ripped up tent and the claw mark in the tree we thought we'd go live and we would show you guys uh, what we're finding out here there's nobody on the live right now but I'm just gonna keep going with it um, <clears throat> And uh, I just wanted to show you guys kind of what's going on here. Do you want to take this? Yeah. And uh, we can switch it over. There you go, homie. Good. Good. So okay. we came back to the area where the abandoned tent was at. A lot of people asked that, about that on our chat. Um, it's blown a little distance away from where we were before. Uh, one of the things we noticed is that there had been some people who thought that the tear marks and the cut marks on it were the just the result of weathering. Uh, there are no new additional tears or rips in it whatsoever. It's the original tears where the front doorway looks like it was ripped open. And then the cut in the back that one of our viewers hypothesized that it was somebody cutting the tent and then basically rolling out to escape whatever was coming in the front. And you can see on the front tear where it got torn into that the fabric is actually ripped. Um, They're ripping in the fabric on that one. But then back here, this is clean cuts. Yep. You can see this is just a clean cut where that person, it was hypothesized that that person rolled out, cut their way out and rolled out to escape whatever was coming in from the other side. Um, another strange discovery that we made since we came back here today is we found the possible victim's clothing. Uh, we found an article of their clothing. It looks to be a shirt. We're not sure. It is pretty damaged. We found it underneath the dirt. But it is, whoever was here, this is their clothing that was here at the campsite. Now what we're hypothesizing is, is when we were here last time, we thought that it was possibly a hunter's tent. Yeah. We were here shortly after that big storm had ripped through the surrounding area. And we were hearing from locals that people who had been displaced because of the storm and had nowhere else to go to were basically staying around the edges of the LBL. They were coming into the LBL and basically camping out because they had nowhere to go. And some of those people were going missing. Nothing was being done about it. Um, obviously, if a hunter goes missing, he's going to have a family, friends, everything like that, who's going to know where he's going to. When he doesn't come back, there's going to be an official stink made, basically. Yeah, but if you have somebody who somebody's on the fringe, somebody who is... Um, already an at-risk person who's already homeless. Um, if they go, if they go missing, nobody is really going to notice because if they they don't have anybody to care about them, you know. And so they're obviously, if something happens to that person, nobody's going to know about it. There's no report made, nothing like that. They can go missing. Nobody will know any difference from that. Now, one of the things we were concerned about coming up here is that you guys remember when we went back to Station 16 after we attended the dogman conference all the bones were gone it almost looked as if the area had been cleaned up and one of the things we were worried about is is that someone had seen our video and then gone in and cleaned up all of the bones from there for whatever reason yeah. now when we were afraid that all this was going to be gone as well uh, we came up it's still here now one of the things we thought of is is that if someone is familiar with the land between the lakes and especially if they are monitoring these creatures in the land between the lakes, they're going to know where Station 16 is. There's identifiable buildings there and everything. This is just in the middle of the woods, and we never gave a location on it. So that might be why this they area... I have no idea where it's at. Yeah, this so area was... clean it up and clean up the evidence. So we're finding ripped up clothing that we had missed before. And now there's food back here as well. There's, there's unopened food that was here. Um, personal effects, clothing, animals have obviously torn up the cooler, but the cooler was intact when we were here. Um, the tent was still standing and hadn't been blown away, and we had come after a pretty strong storm, not the tornado that ripped through the area. Uh, so obviously we think that this tent and this campsite had not been here for that long when we actually found it, when that person had gone missing. Um, another thing that's interesting, if you want to go over here yeah, and show, absolutely. is... We had left that Sasquatch pheromone chip along with the wolf lore here. Yeah, we left that here. When we got here, we tore this up. But we left it. This is the... Yeah. What's funny is this is the exact little thing we put it on because Joe cut it to put the uh, pheromone chip on it. And all of this lighter stuff is still here. The pheromone chip has a little weight to it. 
So if it, even if it fell off, it should be here on the ground. I've torn this up looking for that chip. It's gone. It is completely gone. And we had even talked about when we were leaving out, we were like going, man, we never retrieved that chip. Not that it's reusable, but you know, you want to take anything out that you come in with. But what's interesting is the one thing, the one thing out of all of this that has a a real pungent scent on it that was a lure that is something that is used to lure something in, that Sasquatch pheromone chip, that one thing is missing from this scene. That is the one thing missing here is that thing that had all of that lure on it. Um, oh, another thing, if you guys, if you guys remember that video, we showed you guys the claw marks in the tree. They look a little better than it did a year ago, but they're still there. They're deep enough that they're still there. Yeah. You can still see them in the tree. Just slow down a little I'm bit. Sorry. You're fine. And you can see right here that's one, one, two, three, four, and then a smaller one for five. Almost as if it was a actually that follows your hand. Then you've got the ones that go uh horizontal yeah. too. Over here. Wow, that really it's a bigger hand than mine. And I've got size extra large gloves, but I can barely spread my fingers. And then you guys can see it just follows perfectly. Yeah. And then and you've then, got the ones that are horizontal here. Yeah. That go this way. I'll be darned though. I mean, we didn't even really notice that when we were here before. I never put my hand up here like this. Look, thumb, finger, finger. Mm, I can barely do it. Yeah. It's painful, but. And then that just follows exactly. Wild. So that's not a bear paw. Um, we see, we have a, we mention it all the time. One of our research areas is next to the Pisgah Bear, bear Sanctuary. Sanctuary. We see bear sign. We run across black bear all the time. And um, that's not, it's not bear markings on a tree. Um, but anyway, we had a lot of people ask about this on the last couple of live streams. Yeah. And so. we have a little bit of signal. Hopefully this is coming through okay. Can you guys hear us all right? Those frogs are going crazy. Yeah. Now, something else that's really interesting that we have found on the way down here hiking in is we have found a trail of personal effects. Um, we have found uh, a woman's purse, a heavy leather purse that's just been ripped all to shreds. And Pretty nice purse, too. So yeah. um, we're not in the inner city right now where somebody, you know. Rob somebody, take their purse and then go through it and then drop it off and throw yeah. it out the window or something. We're in the middle of the woods and we found a woman's purse that is just ripped um, and it's it's a heavy leather purse and it, it we found it and it was just ripped. We also found a handkerchief that is not dirty at yeah. all. It's clean, but it's an old school. Really um, nice quality handkerchief. Really nice quality fabric handkerchief. It's not dirty at all. Not a bandana, a nice dress handkerchief. Yeah, like a pocket kerchief, um, but it's just sitting on top of the on top of the leaf in the middle of the woods, like in no. the middle of the woods. Gunpowder Owl agrees with us. Bears don't have thumbs either, exactly. That doesn't look anything that's like a bear mark. Um, now they will claw into trees, but they just don't look like that. That just doesn't look. If you've seen bear markings, which Gunpowder Owl obviously has, those aren't bear markings. That's not, that's not an ax mark. That's not, that didn't go in like an ax mark, okay? That's not somebody chopping into it with a knife. That is something that has gone in deep and then carved down. You can see the wood fibers have been pulled down even a year later. So anyway, what you got? Well, this is, um, okay. Yeah, exactly. This, will, uh, this gives us a time frame on it. Okay. Is there an expiration date on that bun bag? Yes, there is. All right, what's the expiration date? September 7th. September 7th, yeah. 2021? It would be 2022 or 2021, wouldn't it? Yeah, 2021. Because we found it in early February. So how long was that stuff here? But there was a huge tornado in December. Well. Unless there's were somebody who was staying here and this is garbage from before. I don't know. I don't know. You know? That's weird. That's a wrinkle. Yeah, that's definitely a wrinkle. So. So that actually adds to the theory that this could have been somebody who was like camped out here for an extended period of time mm -hmm. because you had a huge tornado come through in December of 2021 and that would have just taken all of this stuff out anyway. So this might have been somebody who was camping here for an extended period of time. So that adds to that theory that this was a, a homeless person and not a hunter that had actually gotten attacked. Well, Dirk Diggler, but asking the last two nights, you two, is this area near where you are? 
No, it's a few miles from the, it's not near the massacre site. This is miles away from it. Yeah. Um, well, as the crow flies, it's not too terribly. It's a few miles. It's a few miles. It's yeah. not, it's, we're not talking 10, 20 miles away, but it's, it's two to three miles away yeah, miles. from the, from the site of the bunkers. So. All right. Well, we got to get going. We've got to, we've got, we've got to a lot leave. of stuff to do today. Yeah. We've got to leave. We're about to follow right now, but we wanted to hop on here and kind of give you guys an update on this. I know you guys were asking last night during the vlog, um, if we return to the site of the abandoned tent that it was just ripped up and uh, we returned today to check it out and this is what we found so um now one of the hold on one of the things we're doing is we took a a uh hold on what's going on you're getting we're using lightning detectors similar to what they're using on skinwalker ranch um we've been picking up lightning strikes that's saying that you can't detect any Thing. from then a four mile radius of where we're at the skies are just there's just blue skies with a few white puppy clouds there's no lightning within miles out here so the theory behind using the lightning detector like we said they, they do that on the skinwalker ranch the, the secret of skinwalker ranch is they detect when there's this you know this explosion of electrical energy and the theory is maybe when one of these portals opens up that's going to put off a lot of energy and perhaps these lightning detectors can sense that and we can kind of triangulate when something opens up or when something like that happens. So we're going to go follow this lead because it, it went off a few minutes ago telling us that something was happening about four miles away. So we're going to use this to try to see if we can hone in on where maybe something is happening in the peninsula right now. Because obviously there's no lightning strikes because it is blue skies. Um, so we're going to go follow this lead right now and uh, on to the next one. So, uh, how is everybody doing today? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Um, we are getting back to it. Uh, thank you all for joining in with us. And yeah, thank you guys for joining on the live. Um, but we're heading We're heading out. Uh, we're going to go follow our next lead because um, something's taking us somewhere else. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in a bit.